so here we go again uh, just finished oiling my elder branches and as always it's oh, it's been so worth it you know I mean the wood is already beautiful in its own but after this it's just it's like the light turned on the inner light that is all right so now I promised the last time around to show how to weave the dozen late eyes and let's do that uh, this is again a do uh, an eight eyes and I've done tutorials showing how to weave those let's see how to weave the dozen and eight eyes this is by the way um, that that's what a dozen eight eyes looks like it has five fingers on every corner that's the most relevant bit of information we need to, about it and this is also this basket that i got here is uh half of a dozen eight eyes very beautiful beautiful structure so to create our structure our elder eyes we do need um, some sort of string and for that I'm using this which is a hemp line uh, from sailing uh, purposes I'm also gonna wax it with beeswax but first I'm gonna take a rough estimate of the length that I'm gonna have to take because it's the dozen and eight eyes has two and a half dozen fingers right that's 24 plus 6 two dozen and six that's 30 fingers and those two and a half dozen fingers every one of them has two passes of the line so it's two and a half times two which is five so we need five times the length of these plus some because there's always going to be a little jump in the corners um, and generally speaking it's always good to have it like one or two more extra length just to have that long enough line to not just tie the knot not just lead the knot but also tie it without having to to worry about the bitter ends okay so that's about as long as we need we need five dozen times the length of one of these so i'm gonna take a little more than than this is just so i get a little extra along the way because they're not necessarily all identical in length and now i take my length of line and i double this up so that's two and if we double up that one that is four and three times that is a dozen one two three so this is a dozen fingers long and now we can just take six times this length did I say six five five times two and a half dozen times two it's five five dozen that's one One, two, and three, four, and five. And let's take half just so we have a little wiggle room towards the end. And that's where I cut this off. Snap. Oh, snap! Right, and I, I suppose we could try oil, uh, waxing this and then just using, this, uh, using it as it is to feed through the, through the branches. We may be lucky and it just works. But it could also be that 
I need to make to to create two little needles from the the wire that I've got here. Ow, that was that was hot. Mm, okay, so what I got here is the beeswax. Don't wrap the string around your finger as I have just done. Just wrap it around the beeswax and then slide along so that the the line gets covered in the beeswax. This is another thing that isn't truly necessarily uh, necessary if you know it, it always depends on the kind of line that you've got on the kinds of beads that you have uh, it's always always a process of tuning into what you need to get out of it and what you need to get into it but that's truly to me one of the greatest pleasures in synergetics in spherical thinking is not only that I am able to play this way around or that way around like for instance oftentimes I'm playing because I find material and I look at it and I can tell okay I can grow this or that or whatever structure out of it or like this would be the the largest structure I could grow from this stuff uh, and of course anything smaller than that can also be done um, so often I I play by what is available and just turn that into many eyes into left angles because then you know I'm turning stuff that is otherwise most of the time considered trash or yeah has had a life or two um, and I'm taking that and turning it into something that is alive again on its own and whatever it becomes you know it really these things are so much more than what we could name them as like it's you know some of them may appear to just be just jewelry because they're so small others become structures to live in because they're big enough for that and anything between that is it's always the same structures the same shapes that we can create but it's not um set like we we can grow what we want we can grow what we need we can grow well we can grow because again sometimes i'm going the other way around i'm looking at okay i i need a table or i need a chair so what kind of shape would that be and then i think most of the time i, I begin with the eight eyes because it's i think the most versatile of the bunch so i begin with this one go from there i can make something easier than that or more complex as as needed but that's generally speaking a good place to begin and yeah that's the eight eyes but you know the dozen eight eyes is beautiful too very much so this is a very long line as you may have noticed a long 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 line long enough to tell a story or two this storyline i also like to call these the umbilical cord once they go through the members all right let's see if we can do without the needles because if we can well then that saves some time i suppose all right so how does it work how does it go this kind of process is simple we the elder tree comes with a, a hollow core I've drilled them open so that it's more <laughs> hollow I suppose um, hollower I, I drilled them open so that I can feed my line through 
And by doing that, I'm drawing geometry, right? Because I'm drawing a connection from this place, this point of a finger, which is the center of a sphere uh, happening, namely the string entering into the finger, going through, getting to this point, which is the other end of the finger. Every finger points two ways. And on this end, we have another sphere, because it's the, the happening of coming out of the uh, string, uh, the finger, the vector, if you like. Now, whichever way, you know, it's it, it doesn't necessarily have to be coming with a hierarchy, but all I do now is that I've put on three of these fingers because I want to grow, I want to grow an eye, which is a triangle, and that is the connection between three spheres. And that, you know, having three spheres connected is three fingers connecting them. And now I'm dropping them sort of down the line, like this, so that they end up somewhere like in the middle of the whole thing. And that's what we got here, a very long necklace. And indeed, if you look at Bucky and some of the material of his that I show, shared on my channel, he called this the necklace model. And if we put anything else any number more than three on this, the next step wouldn't play out the same way. But because we've got three, every set of two of them is like a pair of levers that can point any way they want, because the angle between them is free to, to change. And see, there's three spheres here. There's this one here, one is here, and that's connected to two more that are on the other uh, ends of the fingers. And now when these two touch, we grow another finger between them. And that's what we put in place now. We just take one end of our line and be careful which one, it doesn't matter which one it is, but be careful which one it, which one you pick. We'll see if I chose the proper one, because I'm going to put this one in to that place where that point of the finger, where the other end of the line comes out of. I'm calling this making ends meet often. And by that, let's see if I can draw it. Out. Yes, there it is. If I chose the wrong one, I'm going to undo that finger. If I chose the, the one that I wanted, then this will turn into something whole. Oh, there's an eye. So here's an elder eye. And this elder eye is also telling us that whichever way we grow this, it doesn't really need to be perfect. No one needs to be. Um, it's good enough to be triangle. All right, we want a dozen and eight eyes. We just created the first. And notice how this is stable, and I can draw on it and it closes, because the, those two fingers that we had before that were free to move now are held in place at the place where I can control them most easily, right? If I have a pair of levers here, levers, <laughs> someday I'm going to learn the word, then I can, oh, there's a dragonfly. Uh, on this end of them, where the joint is, it's rather, com rather difficult to hold them in place, to control them. On the other end, it's the easiest thing in the world. You know, leverage. And at that place is where we put in the third member. And now we're membering a membrane. It's just beginning. Because this is this eye, a plane by def defining three points, we get a plane. 
not a surface though we need higher frequency for that but it is good as it is and from here we go on with triangles so we're basically it's almost like we are coming only out of this beat right now this finger the other two seem circumstantial and we con will look at this one and say okay this is pointing at these two corners and every one of those corners has two fingers pointing at them so it's a balanced place that is to say it doesn't matter where we put the next fingers on but now i'm just going to pick one end of that line and add two more fingers because we're already coming out of one and to to make it a triangle we just need two more so I'll just put them on this side. One. And another. And every time in synergetics, every time in spherical thinking, when we're looking at a whole, it's membered by its members. And Yeah, wherever I wanted to take that. Let's see where this is taking us. We're membering these two fingers, and as they come together, they open up. As we draw them close, they open up another pair, another eye. So we've got to a pair of eyes now. And those are both sides, both directions of the triangle. In and out, left and right, whatever we want to call them. They're complementaries to one another. This is almost four eyes, but we're not growing with four eyes now. We're growing in a dozen eight eyes. So we need to have five fingers in every corner. And now we're looking at the finger that we're coming out of, this one. And these two corners here this one has two fingers pointing at it okay this one has three fingers pointing at it that's one more so it's less than five still we need more fingers in other words but it is the heavier side as i call it like this is like in dancing we're turning around this leg around this point uh, and the the one that has two fingers has less mass than the one with the three fingers associated we don't need to have it that complex but it's going to help us along the way however you want to call this it's fine all right i'm going to take a look at this and three is less than five so i need more fingers around this corner that i'm turning around so i'm going to put the light side as the outside of the circle that i'm turning the heavy side is the inside it's where the the the, the compass is put into the paper right that's that side so we're going to put two more fingers two more members on the outside on the light side where there is only two fingers yet here's one another and after that we'll take we'll pick up the other end of the line and put it in where the first comes out on the last finger so this is making ends meet closing that loop you know because really the triangle is the simple most circle circle with the fused steps and that is number three Ooh. careful now I don't want to break it I mean it's just twigs so if I really want to make sure these don't split which they might I could wrap them with um, with string like this to prevent splitting 
or I guess on the first one after splitting all of them I actually glued them in or glued them together all right look at this we've got three eyes half a hex and that is uh, considering this finger that we're coming out of right now this is the light side two fingers and this is the heavy side which has now four one two three four that's enough to grow a corner of a, an eight eyes but we want one more we need five fingers so we repeat the last step we take the light side the outside and add two fingers to that two fingers two legs two steps every one of these fingers is an interval inter valley between two spheres it's that connection that place plays out in synergy time and again Just so. No need for a needle yet. All right. So that's two fingers on the outside. And now the inside string is taken in where the other came out of. And with this, it's also sometimes helpful to grab the two, f two lines together and move the finger along. So one line can draw the other along with it. Okay, so here is our fourth eye closing, which gives us five fingers around the inner corner. This would also you know, show how that would look like the doesn't no like the the corner of an eight eyes, you know, four fingers, or this would be a four eyes, which has three fingers around every corner. Now there's some doubled up because we're making the dozen eight eyes, and the dozen eight eyes has five fingers. We could go full circle and make six and get a neutral corner. That's all the ones that go somewhere along the inside or the um, membrane of our whole system without being on the corners of that system. And six is neutral. It's, it can be flat, but it can be folded too. We want five because that already folds. It grabs, it holds, it goes concave and convex. And five is what we have now. So let's do the other kind of thing that we do when we grow these structures, which is to close off the corner that we've been turning around, the heavy one. And to close off, I'm going to take my inside line, the center line, center line, very nice, and we'll feed that out. It's coming out of this finger here, and we're going to feed it into this one, but from the center to the periphery. We're going out through that finger, which is the, the next one around, you know. It was the first one we put in. So let's go through that with our inside line, our center line. Time for needles. I might have some here, yes. And they might be just long enough. So in other ones of my videos I showed how to make these. This is a thin wire, a length that is at least a little more than twice that of the fingers that we're do doing. Um, but better more than less. And we fold that length of wire in half so that we get a like a loop 
here like a byte oh, where is it? there and on the other end where the two ends of the, the wire go we twist them together a couple of times so that they make a closed loop and on that end with the twist is where we put our end of the line in and then we have a needle and with that feeding my center line out like that is much easier much more okay here we go we come out of that corner all right and now we have a different kind of situation than before because we're coming out of two fingers rather than just one and if we're when we're whenever we're coming out of two we just need one more finger to bridge bridge the gap so i'll pick another finger and i'll put one end of the line through that and then the other and it doesn't matter which one begins because it's a balanced step both go through one way and the other but I'm gonna put a needle on this too and I saw another one here let's hope it's long enough there are leftovers from other projects other structures grown just maybe oh yes just so okay now the freshly oiled wood plays a trick on me there that's one line and then I'll take the other line the other end of the line and go in making ends meet go in where the other string just came out drawing on that drawing it close and we get a fifth eye now we have five fingers around that corner five fingers and five eyes around that corner we're almost there <laughs> we just need a dozen corners but we don't need to count the corners because they do that for themselves on their own all we need to do is make sure that every corner that we move around gets five fingers so looking at the finger that we're in we're coming out of these two sides and every one of those two sides has three fingers pointing at them so it's a balanced moment again so it doesn't matter which which way we go we just pick one end of the line and add two more two more fingers to it finger and another see how much the needles make it easier and they they are great you know I've been using them for anything from the smallest beads where they go through to straws and even larger things and I still have a lot of that um, wire to go much much more I can make a lot of needles of that spindle okay I'm closing my eye or drawing it close but I'm opening an eye with that so here is number six on the outside and with that we are turning again <coughs> you see it might be the video cuts off in a second and I'm gonna have to restart it from there but never mind I'm coming out of this finger and one side here has two fingers at it so that's the light side that's the outside and the other one has four fingers that's the heavy side that we're turning around the center of our circle and we want five fingers for it so we need one more let's add to the outside where the two fingers meet to that line two fingers added One, and 
too. So, of course, after two and a half dozen minutes, two dozen six minutes, the app prism camera cuts off. But I was just putting on my second finger on the outside line. There. And that said, let's make ends meet and take the center line and get out through that very finger. Ooh. And you know, when you're doing this on your own, when one is doing this, one will find lots and lots of just wonderful intermediate steps along the way. Because as it turns out, this whole game has a whole lot of very beautiful avenues and pathways to wander and it's just you know it's magic to to watch these come to life and begin to shape shift once they take shape you know but never just a single shape all right with that we have five fingers around that corner this is the finger that we're coming out of pointing at these two corners and one has two fingers light side outside and one has five fingers heavy side inside the center let's take the center line and go out through the this finger here which is the first on that corner if this is the last let's go out through the the first shall be the last i suppose so i'm taking my center line and i'm did I mention probably that the needle is just long enough? This is really tough. Yeah, but there we go. And that's it. Now we are uh, on the outside and on the ends of two fingers again. Now, and whenever we have that, we just need one finger to bridge the gap mind the gap. That one finger which makes it a full a whole eye, a whole triangle. Not much more needed than that. So as you can see I'm again feeding both lines through this one finger because both need to go through one way and the other. Because every finger points two ways. Also, unity is plural and at minimum true. That's always true. Here we got our two corners done. And, you know, it's fun already. It's uh, whatever this could be. This could be so many things. Because it's not set in stone, it's not defined, it's not caught in a limbo. All right, let's look at where we are. We're coming out of this finger and this corner here has now one, two, three fingers pointing at it. That's more than before, but it's still less than the other side here where we have one, two, three, four fingers pointing at the corner. Four is one less than what we need, so we need one more finger. To get that finger, we add two fingers to the outside, to the lighter, lighter corner, which is the one that has three fingers right now. And there's number one. And number two. 
I'm always making sure I never need to put them in the same place, but I need to make sure that both ends of the line, and this is the other going through, making ends meet, closing the loop. Um, I always drop the needles in two places so that I can keep the, the ends uh, clearly differentiated. Okay, look, another eye. And now checking again this corner has two fingers clearly an outside uh, a light side and the other one that one has five fingers one two three four five with the one that we're coming out of being the last and that is to say we take our center line which comes out of it on the center here and we feed it out through the first finger on this corner if you do mistake of step never worry it's gonna turn out funky and you know that it might not be what you wanted it may just be something that you hadn't thought of which is even better can always happen but if you do find yourself in a place where you get lost, just take a step back, or perhaps a few steps until you get back to a place where you know where you are, and go from there. Or once you get to you get to know the way around a little better, you can always find side steps and um, help yourself that way if you get stuck in a corner. Speaking of which, we are we have an active corner right now. See, we're closing that one because it has five fingers. And we're coming out of these two fingers now. And again, when we have two, we need a third to mind the gap. Let's pick this one. I like it. It's, uh, I left some, some eyes on it. Looks a little like a cross between... Uh, a, a mashup between uh, like a, a whale and a duck or something. Okay, that's line number one. And line number two goes the other way around. And again, it doesn't matter which one begins on this because it's a balanced step. Whenever we're coming out of a corner, coming out of two fingers, we just need one finger minding the gap. And I repeat myself for good reason here, because that repetition brings home the, call it the rhythm of this, the, the, the pathway, how many steps to take to get where we want to go. Look, that's what we just added, this finger. So this side of it, this corner has three fingers, and this one has four. And four is heavier, that's our ne next center, s center sphere, and it's missing one finger, let's add that by adding two to the outside, to the right side. Now there's only three fingers. One, oh, this one's a bit... Whew. It's cutting to the limit of the needle. And two. I think they all get to the limit. And I keep repeating myself for good reason. Because this is the way of learning by heart. Repeat until mistaken sufficiently. Sufficiently mistaken to know the way by on, on one's own. By, by hard. All right, um, just taking the center, center line, going through that last finger I added, which is the second. All right. And with that, we're here. And this time, this corner where we're coming out has two fingers, so a light corner, whereas this one has five, 
which is what we want. So we close that corner by taking the center line out through the first finger of that corner. Center line out through that finger there with the shortest possible needle. There. You can also already tell that this structure is going to be big, relatively speaking. All right, look, we're at a step of closing the corner where we've got the corner active now and we have two fingers that we're coming out of. So if we need one more to mind the gap, bridge the gap, make ends meet. And I'll just take one end of the line through one way. And guess what? We're going to take the other end of the line the other way. Who would have thunk? You know, if you've done the other structures, the four eyes and the eight eyes perhaps, then this one may just be repetition enough for you or one to figure out the pattern so that when one tries another w one just after, you know, it may not be as much thinking anymore, or well, as much thinking it remains. It's a it's spherical thinking, but it may. Ah. This time the needle is too short. Where the third one? By any chance? Should I just make one? Well, why not? In case you're just watching me do this without doing it along, this is how to make one of the needles, um, which we may have done, might have done in the beginning. I'll take my, my line, my wire, thin wire, and I'll measure at least twice the length of what I want to go through, plus a little, whatever little that is. Don't make it too little. It's always easier when you have room to play. Cut that off. And now fold it in half so that we get a bite, as they call them, in Marlin Spike seamanship. Another word, a loop. Uh, but now the loop is open. This is the bent, bent end. And this is the open end. Two ends, indeed. Those we twist together. Just a couple of times. I guess, you know, however many times it feels good, the more the merrier. But at some point it's going to break the line, the, the wire. Because the metal crystals aren't as f happy with dancing forever as... Oh, they broke. <laughs> the metal crystal breaks because it's brittle. Where the line made of fibers, uh, natural fibers, or synthetic. It also breaks at some point, but n not necessarily from bending a bunch of times. That, that's fine. Yeah. That's what the plants do too. All right. Should be enough, I hope. There's a twist now in the end of the line uh, of the loop on, the, on that side, barely visible, and that side has a little loop. And we put the end of our line into the twisted end of the needle. Okay, let's see. I was, I think I was, ah yeah, I was making ends meet. 
you know, I could have forgotten where I was because the structure remembers as it numbers. So I'm just putting in the third beat here and oh, long needle, so much easier. I'm making ends meet. I'm drawing this eye together to open it. There. And this is really coming together now. It's already enough of that structure to to be a meaningful entity. And again, it's one that can very much shape shift. And it will be able to shape shift this one. I don't know, perhaps not as much when when it's complete, because it always depends a bit on the materials used. But this is the same structure as we're making. And you can see how I can push in the, the corners, right? So even once it's grown all the way, this remains a, a transform, which can shape shift between a couple of shapes. But I don't necessarily expect this to, to do the same as, as easily, because I may be putting in enough tension in the line that it's too little room to wiggle without breaking the branches. We shall see, I suppose. Let's continue. We're coming out of this finger after having closed that corner. Looking at the two corners that we're pointing at, this one has three fingers. It's much lighter than the four on this side. So let's add another finger to the four side by adding two to the light side. Adding two on the outside, two steps, one step around and one step in, I suppose. And then taking the center line and taking a step out. So two steps on the outside, one around and one in, and uh, center line goes out through that last one. And thereby we're opening another eye. So this corner has two fingers, that's light, and the other one has five, which is what we want. So we close it by taking the center line out through the first finger in the corner. You see, we've been here. And it seems like we're doing the same thing all the time, which we are. But also we're taking another kind of circle around the structure right now where um, not much is necessary to add because so much is already present. Okay, I'm drawing that line, the center line out now. And here I am on the outside of those two fingers around this corner. Active, so two, need a third to mind the gap. There is one. And there's another. Back and forth, both ways. Because, how was it? Every finger points two ways. Yeah, even the one pointing at the moon. Here we go. Having drawn that in, I've just closed this corner. And we're coming out of this finger now on these two sides. And this one has three fingers. So let me hold it so that you can see. That one has three fingers. Whereas this one, it's got five already already you know what we can close that one we can take the center line out through the first finger in the corner let's do that this is exciting you see it's something changed all the time before this we had only four fingers 
and we needed to add and this time around we didn't because we already had five I'm taking my center line out through the radial finger of that corner the first finger of that corner and here we go we are in these two fingers around this corner which has five we're coming out of two all we need is one to mind the gap going back and forth both ways through one and two This is the way that tree time is membered. Tuck. And by that, now we've got what is colloquially known as a geodesic dome. Um, at least the simple basic structure of what most people use to make a dome. And this is because it's, you know, it's got a big base which is still open now, but if we put it on the ground, the ground would uh, provide triangulation sufficient to hold it in shape. This can also be folded together so it's smaller, becomes a dozen eyes. Um, but this is not yet a full sphere so it's still moving a lot. And we still have five more fingers to go. Let's put those in. Um, but yeah, I, I told you, every step along this way is a beautiful thing to behold and to behold, hold on to this being, I tell you, be wondered to and surprised and spellbound. Um, okay, we're running out of time on the second leg of this film, so let's see if we can do it in eight minutes or less, perhaps a little less. Ah, okay, where are we? We are... Here, we're looking at the finger that we're coming out of, this one. And now both corners around it have four fingers, this one and that one. So to me that looks balanced, which says I don't need to worry which side I'm putting on the next two fingers. I'll just do that. Adding one... Two. Taking the other end of the line, making ends meet, going through that last finger the other way around. And thereby we're closing, opening another eye, drawing it close. There. Okay, now let's see. This side of the finger that we're coming out of has two fingers pointing at it. And this one has five. Look at that. It's already five. We can close it just now, just right away. Let's take the center line, the inside one where the five fingers meet, and get out of that corner through the first finger in that corner. <coughs> there. That's that corner being closed we've got these fingers the, these two we're at the end of two we need one to mind the gap going back and forth with the line both directions both ends of our lifeline our umbilical cord see what we're doing here is we're um, creating a fascia system, uh, a membrane of fascia between the wood. Uh, look, this, this is our active finger. This side here has three, and the other one has five. Perfect, let's close it. Let's take the center line out through the first one in the corner. 
there. Guess what? We've got the corner active. We are on two fingers. We need one finger to mind the gap. I think that's the second to last fingers. Ooh. Maybe we found the first one that isn't drilled all the way through. That was always a possibility. Oh, that's not good. What am I doing now? Cliffhanger. So much for doing it in, in the time that the app provides. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to drill that once more. You just wait for a second. I'll turn the camera on in a, in a moment. Remember where we were because the thing is going to remember for us. See you in a second. Okay, I organized the drill bit and the drill. Again, I broke this one, sadly, because usually it was going with this beautiful little Japanese hand drill, which is a, a, a dream of an of a tool. This is less of a dream, but a tool nonetheless. So let's see if we can get this. Uh huh, that looks good. Ah, okay. Finally, okay, let's see where we were. I think. We were, yes, we're coming out of two fingers here, these two, and we're minding the gap, putting in a third, third member, which now goes through with the bar, the, oops, the core is drilled all the way through so the line can go uninstructed. Okay, drawing this close, click clack. Let's see, we're coming out of this finger and this side has four fingers now and the other one here has five. Nice! Five is what we need. Let's close that corner. Taking the center string on the heavy side with the five fingers, the center string out through the first finger in the corner. There. Whoop. And now we're putting in the last finger. So we're almost there because I'm minding the gap putting in one between the two that I come out of and as I do this I'm I'm getting to the point where all fingers are present and accounted for so the whole structure in a way is present already except when we look at the corners that we're coming out of we'll find that not all of the connections are drawn yet there's still here is the structure and I'm coming out of this finger and in those corners adjacent here you see how every two fingers have a step of, of the line between them. I hope you can tell. There. Oh, it's getting dark, I'm sorry about that. Okay, all connections are there except one between the finger that we're coming out and this one. So I'm going to follow on both sides of that finger, that gap that is there, minding it by drawing through the line that is already kind of pointed out, you know, and it's just seeing what, what needs to be 
brought in and I'm doing one and I'm actually going to take the other and go the other and you can tell my line is a lot longer than what it had to be but again it's it's a balance too sometimes it's easier to take shorter length of line and then add to them when you know how to do that um, but sometimes it's you know nice to have a single line without any any longer pieces all right look now we're coming out of one corner here with both ends of the line and this is generally where I put uh, a knot uh, a reef knot to make it whole but for now let's do another thing first which is that we take one end of the line and take the last step and go through where the other line comes out so we're coming out of one finger again in both directions because by doing that we can actually draw the last eye closed and now all dozen and eight eyes are drawn by the line as well not just the fingers um, but as it is right now with the line coming out of one finger here we could open this still open up the last eye and put something inside and close it again it's like a bag and anything that is bigger than the the opening of these eyes is you put it in it stays in you know it's, it's a container this membrane but now I don't want to have a bag I just want to have a whole dozen eight eyes so I'm retrieving retreating I'm taking one step back to either one of the two corners that I'm coming out of right now with the lines and when I'm in that corner I can put in a reef knot Uh, I, if you don't know what that is, go take a look at the online available uh, informations on it. Both Wikipedia has it, YouTube has it, Google has it, has it a guess. And I did one, one knot between the two lines and the second one goes the other way around. So the line that is in the front of the knot goes in the front of the line and the other goes in the back and they cross again doing doing that I take two turns both of them 360 degrees together 720 five, five row that's a full eight eyes uh, full four eyes worth of degrees it's a full sphere in that one knot and that's good because we've done one full sphere with the line going around our structure and we've done one more full sphere with the line going around the knot in the end so that the being becomes whole. All right, now I've got my knot here in the corner. Nice, ne nice neat little reef knot. And I'm going to take the, the ends of the line and feed them into their respective adjacent fingers to that Call, uh, that knot we just put in right so the knot the the line comes out of the sides of the knots and every side of the line every side of the knot is pointing at one finger and that's where we take the ends through because that way we hide the ends we uh, thereby give more protection to our knot so that it doesn't just capsize or gets ground or gets lost plus we're hiding the ends of the line so that when we cut it off after that that last finger that we go through now oh there goes the needle mm. and take the other one uh yeah we're, we're taking the line hiding it and after that last additional finger that we're taking right now it's really the last one now very last 
After that, I cut off the, the ex excess of the lines. And if I ever have to, I can open that knot, that square knot, and continue the, the, the whole thing because I've got that extra bit of length of line to add on to. All right, now I'm taking this needle, this end of the line, from the knot through the adjacent finger. And there, and that's the last step taken. Now it's cutting off the the excess line on one side and the other. Just as the voice <coughs> leaves me, the mosquitoes come. That's a good as good a time to to be done as any. So, without further ado, here is the eight eyes I started with. We started with, and this is the dozen eight eyes. And since the lines in these, the fingers are of equal dimensions, equal size, more or less, I mean, this is not not a precision machine job um, at all. Every one of these is a little different, but roughly speaking, roundabout. Um, this one has a volume of four quanta, and this one has a volume of a dozen and six and a half, some golden ratio quanta, so uh, four and a dozen and six. That's a lot more room in the new one that we've just grown compared to the, the last one, which is already big. Four is more than the cube can say about itself. Yeah, but this is it. This is the dozen eight eyes. All set and done. Let me see, where's the camera? There. There. Yeah. There. There. Yeah. It's a lovely structure. I can completely understand everyone who falls in love with it. It is absolutely worthy of that. And it gives a great membrane for every any house that we create. I would personally make the house itself based on the eight eyes, because that comes with a lot more ease and fractally creating rooms within it. And then have the dozen eight eyes be a membrane around it, or on top, perhaps or a couple, or whatever, whatever, whatever we want to think of, whatever we need, whatever we can put our minds to, <laughs> including mosquito webs. Let's take care of those. All right, I think that's enough. It was a pleasure weaving space-time with you.